we're going to call to order the September 2nd meeting of the West Sacramento City Council Redevelopment Successor Agency and Financing Authority. We're going to begin tonight, uh, as we do each week, with the Pledge of Allegiance. We'd like to invite the count our guests to join the council and staff in the pledge, which tonight is going to be led by uh, Alex Hirsch. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Right, uh, uh, Councilmember Christoph is out of state on family business, and we are anticipating Councilmember Sandine's arrival shortly. Uh, the council did meet in closed session this evening to confer with our legal counsel regarding uh, one case of, a, of uh, existing litigation, Buckeye Terminals versus the city, uh, with a case number that's noted in our agenda, and no action was taken, and to confer with our labor negotiator regarding negotiations with the West Sacramento Firefighters Association, Local 522, and no action was taken. So with that, we're going to proceed to item 1A, which is presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda, but within the jurisdiction of the City Council. As is noted on our agenda, we are prohibited by state law from taking action or having a discussion on issues that are brought up under item 1A, but it is an important opportunity for a public forum. Uh, we do ask that anyone wishing to address the Council on this or any other item on the agenda tonight to please fill out one of the yellow cards that's available near the front door and to turn the card into the city clerk. In front of the clerk is a timer that we use to make sure that everyone gets a chance to be heard. And to that end, we ask that all comments be limited in no more than three minutes. Also in front of the clerk is a 20th century flip chart that it just simply indicates which agenda item we are currently considering. Uh, we take the yellow request cards all the way up to the conclusion of the staff report on any particular agenda item. Once the council questions or the public comment has begun, we don't take additional speaking requests. So if you're here on an, a specific agenda item, uh, we'd encourage you to get your card in as soon as possible, but certainly before the conclusion of the staff report. But also, we know that for some folks speaking in public um, can cause some anxiety. And so we do ask that there, to the extent possible that there be, not be any boos or cat calls or even any applause or other demonstrations and then we try to maintain a civil discourse here in the chambers. So with that, we have a couple of requests to speak under item 1A. The first is by Mr. Bill Lowell. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. William Lowell, West Sacramento for the record. Uh, yesterday, I I was coming out of the bank and I was, said hi to this fellow walking by with his walker and he claimed to come down from Seattle and he claimed uh, that they already had uh, a cart like what I was pushing for, a shopping cart that's only six inches from front to back. He said that they were using them up there in Seattle. Well, I gave him a call over there, uh, up there in Seattle, I went back over to the bank and was talking to a gentleman over there but they, they hadn't heard about anything like that. So the guy was pulling my leg, unfortunately, but uh, still, still working on it, and they're still working on it uh, over there at, uh, at that uh, Hacker Labs at 1715 I Street. And uh, so I, I guess 90% of them are probably made in China. They're already made ahead of time, so it's having a hard time finding out getting in touch with somebody that actually does the manufacturing and saying, hey, let's let's try one out It's only six inches from front to back and make it a little taller. Uh, it seems simple enough, but it's, uh, it's kind of hard to get in touch with people like that. But we're still, we're still working at it, but uh, I still think we should be able to at least get somebody over here on our side of the river that carries a strong enough cart so that the wheels don't break off when you load it down with the heavier groceries. But I, I still send people over there, that 700 block of K Street, downtown Sacramento, or to the Ace Harbor, where 1800 block of I Street in Sacramento. And, uh, and like I say, if, if our retailers would wake up, they'd at least get started in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lowell. Uh, Victor Lawrence. And Mr. Mayor, I've been here all my life. The only time I wasn't here is when I was born in Sutter Hospital. No Flatley, no Ray Jones, the first mayor. My problem is I live at 603 Glide, number 15. 
I went to the manager, the fire marshal's office. If you had to get in there to get me, 69 years old, diabetic, heart problems, fire truck can't even get in there. The parking is outrageous, Your Honor. That's basically what I'm here for. I only been to one meeting in my life. That's when Ray Jones was there. And I'm, I'm sorry I haven't been here sooner. But I just don't know where to go. I really don't. So I'm hoping you gentlemen can look into something for me. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. If you'll stick around, the, the uh, how about talking to the chief of the fire department? Thank you. He's right behind you, and I know he's got his notepad out ready to, to, to check in with you as well. Thank so. you very much. All right, thanks. All right, those are our only requests on item 1A, so we'll proceed to item 1B. Are there any reports or other communications this evening? Uh, all right. Uh, item 1C is appointments of boards and commissions. We have none of those tonight. Um, the port, to, port Commission appointments are going to be, uh, we have a couple of them coming up uh, relatively soon, so you know, check in with members of the council who are currently serving in those positions um, as well. But uh, I, think, I think the city clerk has informed us that we have two or three of them uh, that, are, that are either, um, uh, that need to be made um, in order to, to assure the continued uh, composition of the commission. Uh, all right, item two is a presentation of a proclamation recognizing Patrick Henning for his service on the Economic Development Advisory Commission. Is there a motion on the proclamation? Moved by Mr. Johannesson and Second. seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Ledesma. All those in favor of the proclamation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries unanimously. The proclamation is adopted. If I could ask Mr. Henning to join me at the podium. I'm glad you got support. Uh, so this is a proclamation uh, honoring Patrick Henning for his uh, service on the Economic Development Advisory Commission. Uh, I'm going to read the, the proclamation real briefly, and then uh, I want to make some, some supplemental comments. So, so whereas Patrick Henning was first appointed to the uh, Economic Development Advisory Commission in February of 2007, and during his tenure on the commission, he uh, led the commission in reviewing various projects and initiatives from the YOLO Broadband Strategic Plan, the Pioneer Bluff Strategic Plan, the General Plan, Economic Development Element and Mobility Element, the Washington Neighborhood Employment Study, the Community Block Grant Activities, and Measure G Investments. Just to mention a, a handful of the hundreds of projects and policies that Mr. Henning has uh, helped to develop. Whereas Patrick served the community with insight and vision for eight years as a commissioner, including service as the chairperson of the Economic Development Advisory Commission. Now, therefore, be, be, be proclaimed that the City Council of the City of West Sacramento does hereby recognize Patrick Henning for his hard work and dedication while serving on the Economic Development Advisory Commission and does honor him with this proclamation. But as I present this, this, these, this is the formal words. I, I really want to acknowledge Patrick's service and leadership in the community. Uh, we're, uh, uh, has been a longstanding member of the commission, but really has helped to modern, modernize the work of the commission and focus it on the key economic development issues and priorities, and has really teed up so much of the successes that we've had in our community in terms of retail development, um, our global food hub initiatives, uh, and the day-to-day -day, uh, policies that help small businesses and, and, and workers here in West Sacramento to, to thrive and to be successful and to inspire his fellow commissioners to do the same and for folks to and help to recruit other volunteer citizens in our community to participate. We're also, uh, Patrick is the, I, I want, I'm, I'm sure this is true, the highest ranking West Sacramento in the executive branch <laughs> of, Cal of California state government. Um, during his tenure became the, the director of the, uh, of the State Department of Employment uh, Development. Uh, a key, key role for, for all of California, but certainly a source of tremendous pride um, in, our, in our own community, having served already in the governor's, uh, in, in, in the, in the governor's office and in various state agencies, uh, working for uh, unions that have been really important and critical here in our own community, including the laborers. Uh, so, so much uh, service to uh, the community, to the state, and to the nation, and just really want to thank you for, for stepping up. And then even after taking on roles of this stature at this, uh, for the governor, to continue to you know, come every, every meeting and leading the work of the Economic Development Advisory Commission and really making the community the best that you could. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. I'll just quickly, uh, as Patrick sitting down, thank Patrick as well for your service on the commission and your all your service to our community. And um, in addition to 
um, all the things that um, the mayor has outlined you you have done for our community as well as for the state. I also know you as a dad, and I see you here today um, with your daughter. So uh, I see you at school, and so you are a very committed community member from um, that perspective. So I know uh, you have a very busy life, and so your commitment to our community is even more impressive because of that. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's a special honor for us. So, Patrick, I, my very first uh, job in the, was in working out of college, was working in the Capitol uh, in the same office as Patrick's dad, who uh, is a, an institution in his own right and a historical figure in so many ways in California in, uh, in, in a variety of uh, labor, social justice, and economic issues as well, and to have the opportunity to be a, a, you know, a, a distant neighbor but also a colleague and, a, and, a, and be on this journey together in terms of economic development in our community has been a, a tremendous honor. So thanks so much, Patrick. Mm -hmm. All right, with that, we have before us the consent agenda, which is items three through six. Any agenda item any, any member of the council wishes to remove or item for a separate question or comment? I'll move the consent agenda, please. Okay, the consent agenda has been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Ledesma and seconded by Mr. Johannesson. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. The consent agenda is adopted. Welcome, Council Member Sandine. That brings us to our time set, time set agenda, item seven, which is a public hearing in consideration of resolution 15 51, certifying an addendum to the Southport Framework Plan EIR and first reading of ordinance 15 7, approving the development agreement between the city and Sacramento Yolo Port District uh, for, on the Stone Lock property in Southport. Ms. Hamilton. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. We're back before you tonight for the opening of the public hearing, consideration and certification of the environmental document and for the first reading of the ordinance title and number. For our audience, this development agreement is on the Stonelock property, which is 215 acres. It's located just south of the Barge Canal in the northeast area of Southport. In 2012, the port assigned the uh, purchase option agreement to Stonelock District Holdings. Uh, of which uh, Cordish is a partner. And in that purchase option agreement, um, it did have a provision for a development agreement with the city uh, before um, any development or transfer of the property could occur. And so hence the reason we're before you tonight. Um, at this time, the Stonelock District Holdings wishes to reassign um, its option purchase back to the port. The development agreement that's before you um, has been considered in draft form by the Port Commission in a workshop. The Planning Commission conducted a notice public hearing on August 6th and unanimous, unanimously recommended approval without any changes. As previously stated, for those at home, no immediate development is contemplated by this development agreement. It essentially references the current vision of the Southport Framework Plan and references the changes that may come about with the general plan update that you will consider later this year. Attachment two of the agenda report contains an outline of the terms with references to the sections of the DA. I won't go into detail on those since it has been heard in several venues. Um, in closing, we would like to reference a menu, or menu, <laughs> I guess I'm hungry. Uh, we'd like to reference a memo that is before you with a revised recommended action. We ask that you open the public hearing tonight, take any public comments that, uh, um, if anyone's present, and then continue the public hearing to October 7th. And notices are being mailed to properties within 500 feet to reflect the date of change for adoption. And with that, that concludes my presentation and I return it back to the council. All right, are there questions for staff at this time? All right, thank you, Ms. Hamilton. Then we will open the public hearing on item seven. Does anyone wish to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and return it to the council for any further questions or discussion uh, or for a motion. Mr. Mayor, oh, one, Mr. one Mr. point. Uh, we're asking you to continue the public hearing until October 7th, not to close the public hearing. Oh, sorry, okay, so let me reopen the public hearing and leave it open for the motion to continue it. I'll move that the public hearing be moved to continue to October 7th. That's a, a, 
Is are, you, right? are you moving the whole recommended action? The whole recommended the action, yes, which includes so, continuing to October 7th. Thank you. All right, so it's been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Ledesma and seconded by Mr. Johannesson. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none? That motion carries unanimously. Item 8 is consideration of the next phase of the Bright Park Master Plan. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Tonight, Phil and I have, are here to present to you in consideration of the next phase of Bright Park Master Plan additional financial analysis as requested by Council on August 19th. On August 19th, Council was presented with the next phase of Bright Park Master Plan. If Council approves the recommendation in the report, staff will begin the design process for a community gathering area around the newly constructed playground. The amenities around the playground will include a concrete pad for a picnic area with, a sh with tables and a shade shelter. Also include restroom, drinking fountains, and a multi-purpose court, and a parking lot. The utilities installed to support the gathering area will be include water, sewer, and electrical. If the council decides not to approve the use of the funding sources outlined, staff will modify the scope of work and construct the items with the most priority. All right, is that, that, that's the conclusion? Excuse me? Is that the conclusion of the full staff presentation? Mr. Wright's here for backup. Yeah. I'm here, <laughs> there's questions on the uh, financial right. side. Great. All right, so we had this before us uh, on, for the bulk of the substance of the item at our last meeting. So I, th I think with regard to the, 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 the project, there was uh, complete unanimous enthusiastic support for the project. The questions that we'd raised was around the, the financing and the, and the fee and uh, the department, the, the finance department has helped with the parks department to prepare some information in that regard. I think it does, it's, it's helpful in, that in, uh, in addressing some of those issues. I, I still have those concerns. I'm going to support the item. This is an important project, and uh, the, the issues around the rational ne the rational nexus requirement for development impact fees um, aren't. Uh, and this this is not a ten million dollar project, so it's not going to it will not it will not violate the whole thing all at once. But I, I just want to emphasize how important that we pay closer attention to that test in terms of the way that we are allocating funds from our development impact fees. Um, so as I said, I'm going to support, I support this project. I know the, the whole council is very enthusiastic about it, and I, I, and I, and I'm, uh, I, I am as well. Um, and, uh, and, and so as we proceed to think about how we are managing our impact fees in ways that satisfies our, our, both our legal obligations but also the expectations of our residents with respect to its nexus to development, that we, do, we, need, to, we need to deal with that. But, there's, I don't, but we don't need to delay this project any, for any, any, any further than we have for the last uh, couple of weeks in order to accomplish that. And this is because the, 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 you know, the test that, we've been, that was described in the last meeting, a little bit to, to the same extent in the, in the staff report, I think is applying a, like a reasonableness test um, or a hopeful reasonableness, reasonableness test to the impact fees. And the, the, you know, I, I'm not the city attorney, but the, I mean the courts have weighed in on this issue quite, you know, relatively extensively, as have other cities. And it's the reason why we commission a nexus study when we impose impact fees of any kind, whether it's the, for fire stations and, and police stations, or for roads, um, or for parks, um, in order to to establish the, a rational nexus between the uh, the projects that are being funded and the impact fees. It's different from the mo the strictest. I don't even, I don't remember what it's called. You know, like uniquely and specifically uh, ne specific nexus test. It's not required that each that it has to have a direct 100 percent link per percent link to every project. But it cannot simply be a hope or a wish or an invented connection between a project. There has to be a rough proportionality between the expected um, benefit to a new project to a new development that is paying the impact fees and the projects that we're funding. 
um, and, and, and the American Planning Association's principles on policies on this are quite clear um, that, 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 in, that in order to satisfy those tests, you need to be careful not to use impact fees for the purposes of, of resolving deficiencies in existing facilities as we have in this, as we are, as, in, as is the case here. Um, and also not to, uh, for investments in projects of general community benefit, which is what this mostly is. Um, and to be, be quite, be very attentive because you don't want to risk, you don't want to legally risk the viability of your overall fee program um, by having it challenged based on not satisfying the legally required nexus, that when you charge a fee to a new unit of construction, that that fee is for the purpose of mitigating the impact of that, of that unit. In other words, saying if you're going to add more people to the community, if you're going to add more development, the, the char you're charging them fees in order to build more parks, build more roads, uh, build more sewers and everything else in order to meet the, meet the impact of that development. Um, and, uh, and, and we have to be, uh, you know, we have to be pretty disciplined about that. Uh, we don't have to be obsessive about it, so that's why I'm going to vote for this item anyway. <laughs> but we, 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 I think we need a renewed, um, renewed attention to those policies. Um, that it, it's not simply could somebody in in a new in a, one of our new developments could they possibly use Bright Park if they wanted to? That's not enough. We you know we need to have an assessment. Okay, but is that what they would be doing? Um, and are we adding additional capacity to the to the system if we're going to protect the long uh, the long term viability of our of our, of, our, of our funding programs and of our basic infrastructure um, in the community. So as I said, I'm going to support this, but just marking it for when we, when we get further into our budget timeframes and our master plans that we, we do need to be, we need to, we need to be pay tighter attention as we haven't, as we used to, to the, to the nexus studies in a very clear, uh, clear way in order to assure that we're, we're not putting ourselves at legal risk and we're not jeopardizing our long-term ability to, to use these financing tools to develop the necessary infrastructure for our community. All right, I know at the at last meeting, we all, everyone said how much the um, if, if members of the council want to speak on the item again in terms of the content, that's also welcome, but otherwise, uh, I see Mr. Johannes is ready to. Yeah, no, I, I think um, I agree with the mayor on the um, continuing analysis of the nexus with these projects. This is, um, we've had a lot of discussion last time on this. It's huge for uh, the Brighton Broderick area. I think it's a uh, long past due, and I think all the council agrees this is really what the, the neighborhood needs and that whole part of the city uh, needs. And I'm fully supportive and would move the um, item. I'll second. Okay. All right. It's been, you want to say a word? Oh, okay. It's been moved by uh, Mr. Johannesson and seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Ledesma. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Item nine is presentation on the Southport Levy Improvement Project Village Parkway Improvements South. Mayor, may I, as yes. uh, Chris uh, Swarovski uh, leaves uh, from this presentation, Chris was uh, so key in the Kaboom project at Bright Park. Uh, making council presentations probably not his strong suit, but uh, <laughs> delivering park projects on a tight timeline is definitely his skill set. So we're really grateful to have him on our staff, and he pinched it for uh, Director Bob Johnson today. Well, I think he was great council presentations. Uh, usually, <laughs> this is the first one he's done, at least in the time I've ever been here, where his name was not mispronounced at least twice. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Thanks. But yeah, great job. Thanks. All right, Mr. Fabian. Good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. Uh, tonight's presentation, as you said, is on the Southport Levy Improvement Project, but more specifically focused on the first phase of that project, which the Village Parkway Improvements South to distinguish it from the other project that's going on in Village Parkway in the northern half of the Southport area. Um, we wanted to highlight some of the unique features and opportunities with the Village Parkway South improvements, and then later I'll talk about some of those, some unique uh, features and opportunities with the levy project uh, in its entirety. Um, the purpose for the Village Parkway project is, is number one, a replacement for South River Road that will be uh, disrupted with the levy improvements. And more importantly, it provides access to property owners in advance of levy construction. Um, you could say that the project literally paves the way for a streamlined construction of the levy improvements that will occur uh, later in 2016. So I want to talk just uh, briefly about the alternatives. Uh, originally, there were two alternatives discussed with the Department of Water Resources, our partner on this project. Um, one alternative being on top of the newly designed or constructed levy, another alternative at the uh, toe, the landside toe adjacent to the levy, 
And as we looked at these opportunities or these alternatives and the amount of additional land that would be required, potentially impacting additional homes, additional uh, material that would be required to, um, to uh, widen the levy, uh, we looked for another opportunity and proposed uh, an alternative <clears throat> along the Village Parkway alignment that would not only minimize impacts uh, for the project, but also would align with the transportation and planning objectives for the city. And we saw this as a complementary alignment of both city and flood goals and objectives, um, and which is oftentimes unique where these projects uh, sometimes come in conflict. We saw this as a really unique opportunity to advance where we can actually align uh, these projects to achieve uh, these similar goals and objectives. It also turned out to be the lowest cost alternative uh, not only for the roadway itself, um, and as you can see from the graphic, it's a lot shorter in length, um, the, the yellow alignment there is a lot shorter in length than either on top of or adjacent to the levee, which is um, indicated by the, the blue line on the, on the um, slide there. Um, but also, as for the other reasons mentioned, reduction in the amount of property needed as well as the amount of material needed to construct the levees, it also lowered the overall cost for the overall uh, levee project itself. And after several uh, meetings uh, with the state and persistence by the flood team, we were able to um, get the state to see uh, the value in this alignment, and they agreed to cost share in the village park in this alignment for the uh, replacement of South Road Road. And so briefly, we wanted to also talk about village parkway improvements north. Um, as you know, the project was recently approved in, in August, and it connects the Mike McGowan Bridge to the existing Village Parkway at Stonegate. Now, when both of these projects are complete, this uh, complete alignment of Village Parkway provides an alternative transportation corridor that will connect the northern and southern portions of the city through the eastern portion of Southport, um, all the way from the Mike McGowan Bridge to Gregory Avenue in the south, and alleviate congestion on Jefferson Boulevard, and also provides um, alternative emergency access as well as evacuation routes in case of emergency. And just to put the two projects side by side, um, the Village Parkway South project is scheduled uh, to go before the Wasafeka Board uh, later this month, next week in fact, to award the construction contract. Um, we anticipate to begin construction in October and complete the project in July of next year. And as you can see from the side-by-side -side comparison, these projects are essentially under construction at the same time. And uh, one of the things that we were very fortunate uh, to have happen for our project is that it did come in about $1.5 million under the engineer's estimate, which is one of the things that we had hoped might happen by separating this transportation project uh, and this component from the overall levy work, which tends to be very, very, very expensive construction. So by separating it out, um, we were able to realize those uh, significant savings. So here's just a graphic of, slightly different graphic of the Southport setback levy project, um, which also shows these inlet outlets that will be constructed um, to allow the Sacramento River to um, flow into the offset area that's created between the setback levy that's constructed and the, and the current levy, or what we call the remnant levy. Um, and with this, I want to talk about the future of South River Road. As I mentioned, the levee project itself um, will, especially at the northern and southern ends, will be degraded and South River Road will no longer be accessible and will no longer be a continuous segment um, atop that levee, uh, hence the uh, replacement roadway along the Village Parkway alignment. So we anticipate to start construction of levy improvements in 2016, but through construction phasing, it's likely that South River Road, South River Road will remain intact on the current levy till sometime mid-2017, second year of the project. At that time, we anticipate the contractor will begin the deconstruction of the northern and southern ends of the, of the uh, levy for the uh, remediation there, and then that will, in, in, in effect, remove all access to the current South River Road. The project is uh, slated to be completed in the fall of 2018, and uh, 
At all times during the project, marina access will be, will be maintained um, and also be maintained post project condition. Um, some of the opportunities, uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot of recreational opportunities that this project will provide, both um, on top of the setback levy for uh, bike and or pedestrian, as well as in the offset area. Um, and through discussions with uh, staff, we intend to coordinate um, the post project condition of, of this area um, with the park master plan and also the bike and ped master plan updates. And then, not really just for fun, but this is a, a conceptual uh, drawing or cross section of, of what the project looks like in the area of the setback levy. On the far right of the screen is where the existing levy is. Uh, the levy that's uh, to the left of the screen would be the new, newly constructed setback levy. Um, and it has flood control features both on the land side of that and also on the water side in the offset area. But you can see between those two levees is the creation of that offset area, which for much of the winter will be uh, somewhat inundated with uh, the Sacramento River floodwaters. Um, but it provides a unique opportunity for recreational features, for habitat and ecosystem restoration, um, additional uh, floodplain habitat, and it provides a, a very nice template for these future recreational opportunities. Um, it's an extremely unique uh, project uh, in an urban setting along the Sacramento River, um, and also with the amount of uh, mitigation and revegetation that we plan to do with the project, um, it should be able to advance uh, mitigation for future projects that under the West Sacramento Levy Improvement Program that was SAFCO will either undertake in partnership with DWR or in partnership with DWR and the Corps uh, once the GRR is uh, approved and, and authorized and we receive congressional um, and federal funding. So that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions or receive any feedback from the Council. All right, Mr. Johannesson. Yeah, can you go back to the, the slide on the, uh, just a levy overview? This one? Um, yeah, I think that is. So, uh, in terms of um, bicycle access, then, so, or actually, it was the uh, image of the uh, decommissioning of South River Road. There's only three, so. Yeah, it could have been the one. Okay, so, so it's basically going to be decommissioned. Now, in terms of the uh, upper level of the levy, is that still going to be accessible to bicycles and pedestrians? I guess pedestrians who walk up there, but. Yeah, it's uh, the final condition of the top of the levy will be compacted um, uh, rock, not asphalt. So it would be conducive to trail bikes, not necessarily to um, uh, road bikes. Uh, however, um, we do envision that this could be improved, you know, in the future. There is no prohibition from paving the top of the levee, but that's just not part of uh, the design of this project. Okay, so um, without paving that uh, for a regular bicycle path, it would be below them? Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct, yeah. Uh, just along the, the road, I, I would imagine. So what would the bicycle path be? It would be a, it'd be a compacted gravel road similar to the Clarksburg line right. before we paved that. And there would be a bike lane on Village Parkway, right? Right. Yes. Okay. That, that's, that's the part I'm confused about, too. So the, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no it's, but the bicycle access thoroughway would be basically along Village Parkway. Correct. Okay. And there's also... And not um, on, the, on top of the completed levee. Right. Okay. And For the, a street bike. In the short term, you'd have to use a mountain bike or hybrid walk that Walk yeah. that facility. It's not good to and I think that's the reason Greg mentioned both the park's master plan from 2003 would need to take a look at this and the bike plan as, as well. It had the potential by working with RD900 to pave that and have a, a class one bike uh, paved uh, line along the river. Yeah, I just think the um, the issue is you know we're looking at um, how to increase park space in, in the city and you know, obviously to have something that overlooks the river is, is it and a huge asset to make sure that that happens. Sandine. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It occurred to me when I was um, reading the report, I know we don't have to have all of our um, 
items go through our commission structures, but it occurred to me that the Transportation Mobility and Infrastructure Commission might um, want to receive a briefing and, and learn more about uh, this project. So I'm, I'm hoping that, um, again, I don't know that, that every single item has to go through all the commissions, but I think we're trying to broaden um, kind of community input that we're receiving. So I, I just suggest that that, that that go to them at some point. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Greg, for the update on this. And it is very helpful. If you can go back to the slide on just this, this, this uh, scheduling. I just want to make sure I... There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So the South Parkway, it says complete July 2016. Yes. So that would be before the, the north side is done. Is, That's is, correct. And is there, is it just easier to access on that, that roadway? I'm trying to understand what the... I think the primary difference, I was talking with some of my colleagues, and the primary difference between the projects, we don't really have a lot of cut and fill on our projects. It's okay. relatively level, whereas the one in the north uh, does. does and requires uh, uh, long periods of settlement before they can, once they transport the dirt. And I think that's mm -hmm. what's extending the project so long. Okay. That's one of my key questions. But um, for the, a lot of the same reason, I mean, I, seeing these two projects now, you know, granted their ward construction is next week, but seeing these two projects come together and all of a sudden we are probably w well ahead of schedule. I think, I, I don't know when we anticipated this to be done. Um, I remember on the planning commission days, this was nearly a pipe dream to get, be able to get this village parkway done in this amount of time and seeing these two segments kind of come together in basically the same year and being completed in 2016, 2017. Which, and we estimated it this morning somewhere between 10 and 12 years ahead of schedule. Yeah, it's, it, it is remarkable that we've been able to accomplish this, get the bridge built, um, which was a similarly more remarkable feat. Um, and Southport has this access. So I um, uh, just want to say thank you and a great job on kind of pulling this together. And it does deserve, you know, being the, the community briefing because they, they, there is a wide amount of access going on on, on the McGowan Bridge uh, from bicyclists, and you see them going up South River Road um, and riding along South, South River Road. So I think folks will be excited to know this is actually going to be breaking ground in the next 30 days or so. So can, this is great. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is a big, this is a, a, a very big deal and a giant, uh, giant win and. Uh, uh, the stars have aligned, but it's also uh, a lot of, of really tremendous staff work um, across departments to take advantage of opportunities and lay the groundwork and sometimes chase rabbits that don't that don't pay off. I mean, we certainly have we have plenty of those too, and uh, we don't always get a great staff report about them. But uh, thanks for trying those too, frankly, because it's 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 those rabbit chases that lead to. You know, Real, as Mr. Ledesma said, you know, really quite unexpected winds of significant magnitude. I mean, this is a major back, a piece of backbone infrastructure for circulation in uh, in Southport um, in a, in a really significant way. So this is I, I, this is a, a big leap uh, forward. Um, I'm assuming that the, the the answers with respect to the the timing also apply to the the why the the, the, two, the two projects cost essentially the same, even though your project is uh, uh, you know nine times longer than. Uh, your colleagues in <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one of the big that's what they told you it's that's why they can't and, yeah and they're not here to defend them they're not, yeah <laughs> okay um, so as, as this is as this come as this project as we prove this and then this comes back later I, I certainly I totally agree with the misending around the um, engaging the, the the TMI Commission in addition to the plan I mean, the planning Commission has some formal roles in this space but really trying to think about the, that, the Transportation and Mobility Infrastructure Commission as the primary commission for thinking about the design of, 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 of streets and pieces of infrastructure. And they have responsibilities for both levees and, and roads. And so this is, a, this is an appropriate topic for them. The kinds of, of, of uh, issues that I think, I, I hope we'll be thinking about, and this is, the alignment is, is prescribed now and it's, um, uh, it's a bit serpentine at places. Where it, you know it needs to be for obvious reasons, and it's and there's some price to be paid for having it be part of a levy project, and not just what would be the very best transportation project. But just keep, you know recall that the both Southport Parkway and Village Parkway hold central roles in our entire Southport Framework Plan vision around how circulation is to happen in Southport, and when the council agreed uh, in 1997 uh, not to make Jefferson six, a six-lane facility. They did so with the expectation 
that Village Parkway and Southport Parkway would become the primary circulating um, streets in Southport. That doesn't just happen magically. As we've seen, it's a it continues to be a struggle, and it always will be. And maybe some of those assumptions were not could could not be borne out in the long run. But uh, you know, we ought to when we have choices about how to how to make these both attractive, and this one now that we're building it to make it as attractive as possible to draw um, trips from Jefferson to it, um, the better. And uh, so alignment is one of those cause, because a key a key um, dimension for for drivers and for cyclists and for everybody else is, okay, what's the shortest? And when there's lots of turns, it feels, it actually is longer and it also feels longer. And so the more, uh, you know, the more we can use the engineering and the visual, uh, uh, the visual design of the street to create the sense of speediness without speeding, um, the better in terms of making it, making it feel for folks who live in the Northwest and South, um, the Northeast and Southeast villages of, of, uh, of Southport to see this, even though it's a longer, um, it's a longer trip than Jefferson that it would hopefully be faster and more reliable um, uh, for them so that we can take some of the pressure off of, of Jefferson itself. That also ought to influence as we're thinking about uh, the staff board indicates two or four lanes of travel. Um, I'm not sure whether that's an actual question about two or four permanently or whether we're talking about two in the near term and four in the long term as we have done in several other facilities like Southport Parkway and the, and the Paul Modesi Bridge and, and others that we've made at the outset as two lanes but ultimately towards four. I don't, I don't think a one lane in each direction road is going to be the answer for the circulation needs in Southport but that's the sort of design question we want to be uh, contemplating. Um, and fully modern bike facilities even on, even on this facility so uh, um, and, you know as we look at this and whether we, we've got to figure out, you know, other, other sources to be, be innovative around how we're um, looking towards bike facilities. When we, when, we, when we started this in our suburban developments in Southport, we were, we were just striping a bike lane, which is, was not an uncommon 20th century approach. Um, you know, there's lots of examples of, of, um, of uh, creative approaches to street design that, that make it even more likely that people will bike. And importantly, that especially on a street like this where the speeds will be high, um, that it feels safe and that it is safe for, uh, you know, folks of, of every age and for uh, parents with children to feel like it's okay to cycle. If we create another road that's like Jefferson where, where, where families don't feel it's comfortable to cycle on, we will have in some sense defeated that purpose. So, um, you know, paying attention to, I, I assume that Village Parkway will have no parking on it like Southport Parkway mostly doesn't. But if it does, where, if there are places where they're parking, having the bike lane on the inside of the parking and not on the outside, on, and not on the, the traffic side, right? But those sorts of design elements, little ones that add up to increasing the likelihood that a broad range of people, not just the, not just the lycra and spandex cyclists, but the broad range of cyclists in the community of all ages and mobility and safety levels um, can feel comfortable and will use that, that facility as well. Because even if we pave um, the existing South River Road, that'll make it a great recreational facility, but it's not going to, it won't be a, it won't be an, a commute alternative. It won't be a way for kids to get to school. It won't be, you know, won't be a way to go to church or visit grandma. So it, it won't serve that purpose in South River Road. Really, it's going to be important that it, that, uh, that it contribute uh, to that, in addition to the low stress um, uh, networks that, uh, that, uh, that are, that Mr. Doherty and the transportation folks are working on inside City Hall as well. Um, the, uh, as we as we look at the top of the top of the levy, um, if there's an opportunity for us to um, de designate this now as the as the northern segment of the Great California Delta Trail, um, which I know, the, you know uh, 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 Mr. Ledesma's alternate, I serve on the commission, the Delta Protection Commission, um, and I think Mr. Viegas is on the Delta Conservancy, representing the Board of Supervisors. Um, that uh, you know, being the being the the gate. Uh, being recognized for what we are in West Sacramento, which is the gateway to the Delta, um, with a facility of this length, um, would be a very good, a very good starting point uh, for the, a lot of work in the Creek California Delta Trail is occurring in the Bay Area, not so much on the northern segment. And I have seen a sign or two in Sacramento where they're, you know, they're trying to lay claim to the to the Delta, but this is really where the Delta starts uh, in the north. And if we are creating a facility of this length and this attachment to the river and to the and to the land side. Um, habitat and vegetation and fauna that you're creating here mm -hmm. through something that has potential to be really spectacular, um, making that a part of the, Cal the, the Delta Trail and qualifying for future grants and all of that would be, I think, a, a, a potential 
um, um, ancillary win uh, here as well. Then the last piece, I'm sure Mr. Christoph has raised this as a West Africa board member, but I know I know if he was here and he wasn't on the West Africa board, he'd be asking, what's our what's our strategy for thinking about the um, uh, a, a, a ranger or policing? How are we, we going to deal with the the you know the large amounts of potential uh, you know camping and illicit activity area? That we are that we may be creating between the the setback levy and the main levy, uh, you know how 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 are we thinking we're going to manage that in a way that's that's not going to create an attractive nuisance for the for the for the neighbors. Direct question. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have thought quite a bit about that. We don't have a uh, a solution per se, but one of the things that we're trying to accomplish is um, to have as many people and eyes and ears and and you know, coming to the area, being attracted to spend time in the area to be the eyes and ears to help, you know, sort of self-police. Um, we are looking at other ways of perhaps um, using some of the assessment to help fund some of these ongoing activities that we're going to be creating not only here, but in other areas of the city as we go to improve the levees, um, which are going to create these, uh, these similar opportunities elsewhere, whether it be along the ship channel or the South Cross levee, that there may be some other means that we can bring some of these other um, types of, um, whether it be enforcement or or parks maintenance or other amenities so that uh, they can be maintained and, and, uh, um, and policed or, or at least watched over. Uh, All right. I just, I, that's great and we should keep at that. Um, I mean, it, 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 this is too much area for us to contemplate policing being the only solution. I mean, that's, that's all, you know, when everybody thinks about this sort of thing, so well, just, just please, please put police out there, hire park rangers. That's not going to be a viable master solution. It's going to have to be in the toolbox. But thinking about the, the, the you know, the uh, lighting and, and, uh, and you know, uh, uh, monitoring equipment around the, how patrols will get access and how, how, we'll, how we will activate. So we're thinking about, you know, uh, uh, weekly 5Ks or stuff on the levy top that simply bring people that are that that uh, are a fun they're a fun great activity in the community but if they're also if they're they could also be an essential part of part of that eyes on the eyes on the project uh, strategy that you're describing but I do think it's important that we stay ahead of that of that issue so I'm glad to to hear that uh, you're, you guys are on it so All right any other questions or comments Miss Andine. The only thing that occurred to me, you were channeling um, our colleague, and I was thinking when I was looking at the the, the riparian landscape, because he's very, um, has, has signified his interest in a botanical garden, so for some reason that was also coming to mind as we're thinking about that space, and that could also um, uh, contribute to some as an amenity, some kind of um, eyes on the, the landscape. Anyway, that, that just did occur to me when, during your presentation. So we can all channel our, our colleague <laughs> while he's not here. <laughs> all right. Any, any further uh, discussion? Questions? All right. Great job. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. City Manager and team. Yeah, great job. And Mayor and Council, on September 18th, there'll be the uh, construction ceremony to start uh, Village Parkway North. That's Friday, September 18th, 10 a.m. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, that's a good segue into Council calendar. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Head. Mayor. I just wanted to point out that um, on September 11th, 12th, and 13th, we're going to have the, the youth hackathon called Code for Hood is going to be at the a community center. We met with the uh, organizer today, and um, they're expecting over a hundred young young people um, to attend awesome. that event. So we're working very closely with them on the logistics um, for that. So it should be kind of an interesting event. Um, not on your calendar, but it was on your newsletter. And your newsletter is the uh, Center for Land Based Learning um, dinner that is on September 13th. And I promised the fire chief that I would mention the academy graduation um, that is taking place on September 18th at the community center. And we're going to have three. It's, it's actually at convention center. Convention center, I'm sorry, the convention center. No, we have three graduates. Three graduates, correct. Thank you. All right. And uh, I think it's our intention for the, for the meeting that we have scheduled for September 16th. Uh, that the uh, we've been conferring with the manager and the clerk. And if, we, to, if we could get it, I believe we can just have that acted by a consensus of the council to move the meeting from the 16th to the 23rd. Yes. 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 So the, yeah, but the, just for some some background, the, the uh, uh, West Sacramento is one of the participating cities in the First Lady's Let's Move campaign, and uh, uh, we've been. Uh, 
there are five categories in, in which the Let's Move campaign monitors uh, progress and success. And in those five categories, we've won uh, one gold, uh, three gold medals, one silver medal, and one bronze medal. And I, you know, I don't mean to, I don't want to brag on behalf of our community. The city, another city in close proximity to ours, has succeeded in collecting two bronze medals. So we've done pretty well. The White House is having a, 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 a ceremony about this project, um, and has invited the participating cities to to be present. And so um, I'm, 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 it's a great honor by, to be on, to invited to to by the first lady of the White House for that ceremony. So. Appreciate the council's um, last-minute indulgence in, in making a schedule change for us to be able to participate. But that the, those categories, they, they, they're not all, they're not even mainly um, activities of us. They are what's going on in the community by our city departments and parks, and but but by by residents, by by folks in the community. They're indicators of um, physical activity, efforts to, to deal with uh, childhood obesity, and in a wide variety of educational and, and activity and recreation programs. Um, and lines up well also with our um, uh, livability program with AERP. So it's a, it's a, it's a, great, uh, a great recognition, one of the, the many metrics that we're using to assess our progress. So. All right, any other questions on the calendar? Seeing none, city manager report. Just briefly, uh, Senator Pan's bill, what we call the HD supply bill, which would prohibit cities from entering agreements with retailers to shift revenues from one city to another. The assembly passed that 55 to 22, so in the process it goes to the Senate for concurrence. So shortly it should be headed to the governor's office uh, for his review. And then on water conservation, another great month in July, uh, the city reduction was 42 percent compared to July of 2013. So we are uh, continuing to make a good pace to, uh, to meeting our state mandated 28 percent goal for the year. Citywide or the city government? No, that's citywide. It's 42 percent. Okay. I thought the, the, the figures reported by the state were 35. Were and we confirmed, we've confirmed a couple times with Regional Water Authority, who's checked with the state, we're at, and it could be some year-to-date figure where they're using maybe January or something, but our, both for June, which is about 40 percent, and July at 42 percent, were compared to the previous month in 2013. Great. Fantastic. Any, any questions on city manager report? Mm -hmm. Did you have the, were you going to add this, Mr. Oh, Mr. I was going to add back to the calendar. Just, yeah, back to the calendar. We have an important event going on on Thursday the 10th. I know it's not on your calendar, but it sh should be. Is that we're going to have a, apparently an unofficial flag raising for West Sacramento at the new Broderick in Midtown. They are planning to raise a, have a ceremonial flag raise. Our mayor will be there, and I'm going to try to be there. and urge the council members to be there as well. They're going to put a West Sacramento flag in the middle of Midtown at the Broderick location, their newest Broadway location. And it will, we're sure that this will become a regular ceremony as the Broderick brand expands outside West Sacramento. Is that going to be our embassy? Yes. Yes, and, and, I, and I am asking for full diplomatic <laughs> immunity yes. as I enter. The, the laws of West Sacramento will apply inside Broderick Midtown. It is. I mean, it's a remarkable story. That just the, the where the, the if you if if you had told any of us in West Sacramento 15, 20 years ago that folks would be franchising the Broderick brand um, across the river and now in the Bay Area, even even the most optimistic of us wouldn't have believed it. And uh, so it's a it's a it's an interesting and uh, fun kind of kind of fun uh, uh, development that's been happening, and it's one of the reasons why the the, the founders and the proprietors of Broderick were were honored at our uh, civic leadership boards a couple of years ago because of their uh, you know their excitement about they're they're so excited about West Sacramento they want to take them and Broderick they want to take it all around the all around the world so it's great. All right, city attorney report. Staff direction from members of the council. And we have no future agenda item requests, so is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Desmond, seconded by Miss Sandine. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none, motion carries, say on the 23rd.